Hello, my name is Tyson, and this is our 2017 Thor Vegas 25.3, along with our 2003 uh, Chevy Tracker um, tow vehicle and two electric bikes. And we um, absolutely love this package, but uh, unfortunately, um, I don't know if it's unfortunately, but we have just come to the conclusion that uh, we would like to uh, list it uh, for sale um, in hopes of selling it to buy a fifth wheel that uh, my wife, when we're uh, remote, can have her own dedicated uh, office in. So uh, uh, otherwise, we really love this and it, it would work um, very well for us for a long time it is all set up for uh, boondocking it has 400 watts uh, solar on the roof that can be angled uh, to follow the sun it has uh, two 206 so 412 amp hours of lithium batteries that were just installed uh, this fall uh, we w were living in it for the last two and a half months um, we left early November went down to Utah uh, Arizona, Southern California, back to Arizona, and then back to Wisconsin right now where uh, we've been back for about two weeks. So it was a little brutal coming back, um, but uh, we have it all cleaned up and we're going to list it and we're really hoping that it can go to a good home. Um, someone that can enjoy it just as much as we did. Uh, as far as we know, uh, we are the third owner. The first owner that bought it was from Minnesota. He used it for tailgating for Vikings games and that's about it. It only had about 10,000 miles and it was hardly any use whatsoever. Second owner was from uh, Madison area in Wisconsin and him and his wife actually lived in it for close to a year after they um, got done with school and before some of their careers and uh, their family started so uh, they did some of the upgrades uh, that we'll go over and I improved on some of those upgrades and it was a great package uh, for them while they were living in it full-time for a year it was a great package for us when we were living in it full-time for the three or four months um, it's just um, it's a perfect uh, couples or really small family uh, coach so the plan for today is I'm gonna walk you through the outside the inside I'm going to be um, brutally honest and show you any imperfections that might be because my goal is for you to know um, exactly what the, not only the perks and the, the pluses of this unit but also um, some of the um, maybe uh, imperfections and some of the wear and tear that it has seen. So uh, like I said let's start on the outside then we'll go through the inside. And Uh, 2017 Thor Vegas um, one of the great great things about this motorhome is the huge massive curved front windshield it is um, really what uh, what it's known for it's a, a very small compact uh, technically class a motorhome because it doesn't have the uh, cab of a regular truck however it's built on a class C um, frame and that's why uh, you get the small compact size and also you have uh, smaller tires on it and uh, talking about the tires um, before we left for Arizona in um, February we actually put brand new tires on it it was the first set of new tires on it and if you look at these these are more all-terrain tires uh, Firestone uh, Transforce these tires um, 
we, we were a little concerned about putting all terrain on but i i like the the meat that that tire gives you and the look and not only um you know you're not going to go off-roading with this however uh, if you are on loose gravel i think that it will help a little bit or if you're on uh, snow packed roads or a little bit of ice it's going to help a little bit so we were a little concerned about the the ride but i can tell you it is just as good if not better than the highway tires that were on it before and i have no regrets we put about 2,000 miles on them on the way home and had no issues whatsoever um while we're down here these are uh easy tire um pressure monitoring system and there's a monitor inside that will come with the unit uh, these are pass-through systems, which is really nice. So you can actually air the tires um, with them without having to take them all the way off. Um, system's really nice. It's a good peace of mind. It uh, has uh, the six tires for the RV, or six monitors for the RV, and also four for the tow vehicle. Um, I'll show you that uh, as we keep going. There is one monitor that failed on the way back um, from Arizona. So you will uh, need to get, replace that, but you can replace them um, just with one um one one uh oh sensor um oh someone's going crazy they lost their dog it's very traumatic over there but i think they got it all right we're good sorry it's a little just distracting all right as we were um you can see on the mirrors right here that they do have the um, side uh, camera mirrors and I can show you on the inside where you put your blinker on the right and this camera will activate. You put your blinker on the left, that camera will activate and obviously there's a rear view camera as well. Uh, Coach is equipped with uh, frameless windows that look very nice. They're heavily tinted, um, looks great. Uh, graphics on the sides of the coach are in pretty good shape. Uh, gel coat's in pretty good shape. Uh, could use a buffing and waxing in the spring. Um, too cold to do that right now. I try to get it cleaned as well as I can. Also, the entry door does have a window in it. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out, um, just leaving out on our first trip, we heard uh felt like that we hit something we couldn't tell what it was we came out and we realized that our fender actually had fallen off it's just a little plastic fender as you can see back here with maybe two screws that hold it on um purely cosmetic doesn't really offer any protection or anything so we didn't replace it um if you called thor you might be able to replace it it'd be up to you um so it's it's like i said up to you here is our front storage compartment that is also a very short or narrow uh, pass-through compartment about four inches that goes all the way to the other side um, but that's a pretty good size compartment right there with this being on that class c frame that's why you don't get the real tall pass-through storage but you do get something so if you have a broom um flag pole um the pole for uh we boost or whatever it will fit in there uh, quite well but you're not going to be getting uh very large items um in that compartment i stored all my tools when we were on the road i've taken them out since so this has the porch entry light also a good grab handle um right there it's got speakers wired to the outside uh, we never really used them too often 110 volt uh, power outlet um, right there and a TV right here all the TVs are uh, will come with um, fire sticks and those will connect um, to the internet system that we have installed that I will show you on the inside um, it's a cellular internet system that you just need to provide your own uh, sim card for but uh all these two there's three tvs in total they all work great um nothing more to say about that so i'll show you this is going to be the bulk or your main storage area and uh there's a few things that i did that i'll point out um i actually if you can see that shelf right there i put that shelf in and then there's about a 12 outlet um power strip right there I also installed that and that was my charging center for my drill batteries 
and also for the e-bike batteries and anything else that uh, didn't need to be inside but like to uh, keep charging so that will run off of the inverter or will run when you have shore power on and it's just nice to have all that charged up there's an outlet right there that the power strip is connected into and then uh, that still left us with pr plenty of storage um, underneath that shelf um, so it, I think it was a good upgrade and it helps keeping some of that stuff organized. Dually tires in the back, uh, replaced right when, um, it's replaced right when the front ones were, um, obviously. So it would be good every 5,000 miles to take them in and have the tires rotated. But other than that, you should be, um, good for a while. So this has the very large um, awning. I will uh, extend it for you when you open the door. Just on the left hand side, there is the in and out button right here. Um, it isn't automatic, you will have to hold the button. And uh, this is something I'd like to show you. So sometimes it gets a little stuck on the way out. So all you have to do is come to the side and help it out a little bit and then do the same thing on the other side so um, just a little quirk but I want to be honest so after that you can roll it out and you'll see uh, how it looks when it's fully extended but uh, good coverage that you get from this also what I like about it is it's not as slim of a profile as some of the new awnings however um, the uh, support arms sit up pretty high, which is really great because I've had campers where they come, you know, down low like this and then up, and I can't tell you how many times I've ran into them. Um, so I am six feet tall and I fit under there with plenty of room, uh, probably about five, six inches. Um, so definitely no issues with uh, hitting your head on that so that's what it looks fully extended also um, up in that top tube I'll show you right here there is uh, LED lights I don't know if the camera is gonna pick them up or not but uh, that's really nice and uh, what I like about having them on there opposed to having them up here is by manipulating how far in or out you have the uh, top here you can uh, angle the lights to your discretion to where you want them so um, if you want to make sure that you're not blinding your neighbor next to you you can angle them this way if you have a table set up more further out you can angle them the other way so it's a kind of a cool feature that I do like and then bring the canopy back in so it's not the fastest thing in the world but it's not also the slowest um, it's nice having a power one I've had a manual one for a while that you're sitting there and cranking so just about there and most of the time even though that you have to help it out I've found that for it to go back in, it, it actually seats itself uh, pretty easily. Um, it's about 32 degrees in Wisconsin right now, so I think a lot of electronics is working a little bit slower. Um, but, yeah. Right there is your exhaust for the uh, hood above the stove top. Coming back here. You have your gas fill tube right there, ladder to get up on the roof, and there's a rear can, uh, rear view, or rear window right here. Your camera up there. Um, here is your all-terrain Falcon non-binding tow bar. Having a non-binding tow bar is completely awesome. And this was actually just rebuilt at a RV show uh, in Quartz, um, Arizona, uh, right before we came back. Uh, it was, I had one arm that got bent, one arm that wasn't moving freely in there, got the whole thing rebuilt and now it works just like brand new. 
you can kind of see you have a seven pin connector right there um, and then that winds to a seven pin receiver for the tow vehicle so coming around here is the tow vehicle it has um, roughly 130,000 133,000 miles on it four-wheel drive uh, manual five-speed transmission and it is awesome I love the car um, if someone doesn't want the car uh, with the package I'm gonna keep it myself uh, it's a great little car um, especially with the four-wheel drive there's no rust on it and it just runs awesome and it's a it's a nice car here are the two uh, Bentelli e-bikes uh, we really enjoyed using these e-bikes uh, we weren't quite sure at first with them being a little bit of a more moped style not a traditional bike however we use these all the time and we loved it and this bike rack works out really well for carrying them um, behind the tow vehicle and um, what I did with the bikes kind of blocking the tow vehicle lights um, what I did was I had a that's about three quarter inch square tubing that I welded onto the bottom of this rack and then I put a LED strip lights those ones that go on the bottom of a pickup truck on their tailgate so they have um, different lights that light up red when you're turning so when you're turning left the left head side of this will light up red when you're turning right obviously and then at night it will be red and then will get brighter when you hit the brakes so cool upgrade really helps with visibility I put on some reflective tape there I also put on some reflective tape there for the slide out at night it really helps it's super reflective tape that really just um, blows up um, really lights up in at night um, one of the exterior imperfections is right here um, this is just cosmetic as well there's no leaking whatsoever but their uh, previous owner did get this hung up on something and he was able it is I think it took the whole mounting bracket and kind of crinkled that a little bit um, we were able to get it kind of pounded back and um, this is basically a cosmetic trim piece uh, that you know it's it's a used item so um, just wanted to point out that so uh, all the, the last owner did all the cool bumper stickers uh, we wanted to do stickers but there wasn't any more room so uh, they really had a great time with this and um, it's cool to see where where this unit has been Coming around this side, you have your slide out that the um, bed is in, and under this slide out, right here you have your 30 amp power connection. Right here you have your TV in, never used whatsoever. Um, to the left, your city water connection. Up above that is your fresh water connection, your shower. And then here is the sewer outlet. What I have there is a macerator pump and what that is for um, is being able to pump out your black and your gray tank without having to be at an angle where you let gravity do the work. It has an impeller blade that kind of chews up the, the black and the gray water contents. But the biggest thing that I have found is that with this um, connection being so low, is that there's a lot of places where you can effectively drain with gravity so this will come with it it hooks right up there um, there's a power cord right here that power cord plugs in to a box can't really see it too well but there's a um, electrical box right here with a button on it that has a relay that engages the power to power the um, macerator pump so it just works really good. Um, the end of that macerator um, discharge pipe also has a connection where you can hook it up to a regular garden hose. So if you need to make a longer connection, you can do it with a garden hose and not actually have to have that sewer pipe the whole way. You could, you could run a garden hose all the way into your toilet in your house and dump it at home. Or if you have a sewer plug out somewhere in your yard, you could do the same thing with just a regular garden hose. I'd like you like to probably use a three quarter inch garden holes um, just to help it out but uh here is the storage compartment that i kept a lot of the cords hoses um extra sewer slinky 
Um, you know, there, there's a 30 amp. This is pretty nice. This will come with the unit, but this is a 30 amp surge protector. Uh, power watchdog. Super expensive. Really nice. The last owner bought it, and I would keep it with the unit. Um, but you'll plug that into your uh, outlet at your campsite, and then plug the 30 amp cord into there. And um, it will make sure that the power coming from the box is good. And if there's a surge of power, it will disconnect so that it doesn't affect your motorhome. All right. Back here, you have your uh, water heater that's electric and gas. Uh, you can use both at the same time and it will regen quickly. I've, we've never had any issues running out of water. Um, furnace right there. Above that is access panel for your fridge that also runs off of 110 electricity and uh, propane. There's your exhaust pipe for the generator. Right here is the generator. It's got a remote start. There's uh, three ways to start this. You can re start it right at the unit right here. You can start it at the control panel inside and you can start it at uh, by the driver's seat as well. Here's a little storage in here. We keep our grill in there. Here is your propane access. It's got one 30 pound tank. Um, lasts quite a long time. I put a splitter valve on here. Um, as you can see right there, uh, you can plug that into a regular 20 pound tank. So if you're boondocking somewhere and you want to um, keep the, the rig parked, but you want to just go fill up or exchange a regular um, grill tank, you can uh, do that and run it off of that. You also have a, another T up there where if you wanted to power like a grill from your house tank, you could do that as well. And then here is the other side of that pass-through storage. Wrapping around here, you can kind of see the whole unit. See that big windshield again. Gives you great views from inside while you're driving and while you're parked at the campground. <laughs> Little mustache right there. Has a little bit of class. All right, as great as the outside has been, I really want to show you the inside of the unit because uh, I think it's a really nice layout. Um, so you're going to have to forgive me. We're in the middle of winter here in Wisconsin. I have everything cleaned up pretty nice, but the floors are a little dirty. So walking up here, I'll just do a quick kind of turnaround of the unit. So where the driver's seat, passenger seat is, you have a dinette on this side, kitchen here, refrigerator, his and hers, wardrobes, queen size mattress with TV, and your bathroom. So I'll walk you through some of the highlights. Um, their driver's seat, um, it's got an upgraded gauge. Um, you'll get into some of these motor, motor, motor homes and they're so uh, dated. But uh, the gauge system actually looks pretty cool. The seat's super comfortable. I'll just fire it up. As you can see, potentially 37,936 miles. I'm gonna turn the heater off. Um, to the left, you have controls for your heated mirrors, and then you can uh, change the, you can adjust the mirrors electronically right there. Up here, you have a light dimmer for the interior lights and then that's where your windshield wiper controls are and your headlight controls. This windshield wiper control off of the, the steering column uh, doesn't do anything, doesn't work. Uh, you have cruise control on the steering wheel and then a um, tow haul uh, selector button 
right there. Um, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is kind of nice. It's got like a little turning knob, so when you're doing slow speed uh, maneuvering, it uh, makes it a lot easier. And then that suction cup right there is actually where the tire pressure monitoring system goes. I'll turn the turn it back off. Um, this Android um, head unit was replaced by the previous owner. Uh, he said that it was a little bit bigger, but that's also where your side uh, camera, your side mirror cameras, and your rear view mirror, rear view camera hook right up to. Your buttons right here. The one on the far left is a fog light. Then you have the button to control the nightshades. You're able to start and stop the generator. That emergency start button is a way to link your house batteries to your starting battery. So if your starting battery is dead, you can momentarily combine those systems so that you're able to still start your RV. And then the cab lights are the lights right above the cab here that controls those. Two 12 volt plugs um, right there and then your HVAC controls. Now, uh, one of the things I'd like to point out um, in the front here with the, the seats is the last owner did have a cat and some pets. And if you watch a lot of these RVs, this um, material that they put on the seats and the vinyl for the dash, it just isn't the most durable thing in the world. So you can kind of see the scratches that have been put into this. Uh, like I said, I want to be as transparent as possible. Um, you can kind of see it in this dash too. It's clean, it's in good shape, it's not tearing, but there are uh, some scratches. So I'll just give you a quick view of all that. All right, so this front area has three separate, uh, three separate configurations. Uh, you can see how it is right now. This is how it would be when you're driving. Um, there's curtains to the side when you get to the campground and you want some privacy and also that motorized 12 volt shade that comes down. Second configuration is that these two seats both swivel and there is a table that's uh, being stored right now that goes into the center right there. So you can use that as a workstation, you can use that um, for eating, you can use it for whatever you would like. Um, you also do have another workstation right here for more for when you're driving but that folds down and you can have the passenger uh, either eating a meal or working on their computer third um, way configuration that you could have this front area is that on a control panel right here they actually have a lower button and you can have this bunk lower down I won't do it all the way uh, because you want to fold down the seats a little bit and um, we don't actually have we have the mattress but we don't have it in here right now because we were using it for storage but uh, there's that table that I was talking about and then that is um, where you could have an extra kid sleep um, we never used it but I guess if you're using this more as like a family camper then it would come in handy otherwise it is also a good place to store it if you're place to store um, valuables if you're not using it um, if you don't have a mattress there because you can raise this back up and then you can take that key to, to turn it and then you can't raise or lower this uh, with that key out so that raises just all the way up like so and then there's actually these little pins just in case to keep it pinned while you're driving um, here's the TV in the main living area um, like I said it comes with one of those fire sticks so all your street smart streaming um, services will work on this TV as well here's the control panel uh, this had some scratches on it so we put actually this cool map um, um, vinyl decal on here um, so it turned out pretty good but you just have your standard controls up here you have your tank monitoring you have your generator with your hours 
you have your slide controls this does have tank heaters so your gray tank and your black tank heater you turn on your 12 volt water pump and then the water here controls for 110 and also for a propane um, that's your inverter uh, control that's how to turn your inverter on and off your bed slide and then this is the battery battery monitoring system that I uh, installed when I installed the new batteries it's from Ren Renogy I guess you call it and this will flash when it is receiving a charge um, it's sunny out right now it would be receiving a charge but I have the solar panels disconnected uh, just because you're not supposed to charge lithium batteries uh, when it's cold like this so it will show you um, the charge coming in and also show you what's coming out so right now with the lights on um, I'm at 0.12 amps and one watt so hardly any power whatsoever um, and it shows us at 100% with 411 amp hours um, I think with the cold it's not quite reading right but anyways um, we can go trying to not forget anything but I know this is getting long so let's go into the kitchen area this is a it's not solid surface and it's not just a regular laminate but it's a wood countertop that they put like this really durable vinyl wrap around um, so it works really well you have an extension right here um, I think it's a good um, budget friendly uh, material that uh, looks nice as well uh, the sink in here was horrible it was round um, hate round sinks it was the chintziest plastic um, ever I couldn't live with it so I found this sink that fit perfectly in there I was able to cut out the countertop add the soap dispenser it fits right in there there's a little drying rack right here and then I added this faucet this faucets pretty nice really cool got the spray wand you can move that around spray your dishes wash all that and what's really cool is that it has a separate water dispenser right here so this water dispenser is connected to a five gallon um, water jug right there so you don't have to worry about drinking out of your fresh water tank and keeping that clean and taking some of that water that you need for your dishes and shower so you just fill that up and the water pump for that is right to the side um, it's a just like a, the water pump for the rest of the coach where it's just pressure um, it turns off when when it doesn't when it's the pressure builds up it turns off when you open this it will turn back on and pump water and then the switch to turn that on and off is actually right here so that's on and that's off um, one thing that I did right here is this used to be another cabinet uh, we needed space for a garbage can I like having a garbage can and we also needed space to keep our dog food so I built this slide out contraption right here um, this will normally have another size bin it would it will come with a unit that's uh, the same size we used to keep our dog food in that one and then our trash in this one and then that just slides um, just like you see in some of the newer homes and here didn't do a whole lot but um, they used to have this metal shelf go all the way across and um, you'll see why but we ended it right here so that you just have two um shelves uh right here it actually used to be a little bit higher so it was really hard to use anything above there if you, you can see those holes right there so it was really short here and really big here um so you got good space up above your sink and then right here there's an outlet already out there and we're huge coffee people so we i put in this little drawer so that you can put a coffee maker on that if you like coffee or you can use it for whatever storage that you like but uh remove the shelf from coming all the way across so that the coffee maker would fit in there and then that just goes in and out here's a standard um, three burner propane cooktop uh, there's a convection microwave uh, no oven there's the over range hood um, just some regular standard drawers nothing fancy or special about them um, I did install these colorful lights um, they're LED lights that can be 
controlled a number of different ways. There's a Bluetooth app. Um, there's a hard control um, right there. And then I have them there. I have them in the living room and I also have them in the bedroom. And another cool thing is that they can be controlled by Alexa. I have Alexa that will come right in here. She heard us. Turn off RV. Alexa, turn off RV lights. Okay. So not all the lights are going to be on Alexa, but as you can see, these LED lights are now off. So those are really nice at night where you don't have to have all these blaring overhead lights. Um, and you can have them whatever color you want. So at night we usually have them red um, so that we're not, uh, it's just easy on your eyes at night. So here is the dinette. This folds down into a... I don't know, a short full size bed. Um, my wife worked from there. Uh, it's kind of the main reason why we're getting one and a fifth wheel is that she wants something that she can keep her computer and everything set up um, full time. Here is a little outlet thing that I installed. Um, it's got US, two USBs and two regular outlets. There is storage underneath both sides of these. Um, your overhead cam nets I actually um, put some LED lights in there they're just white lights and they are on these little sensors that turn off um, when the cabinets are closed and then automatically turn on when you open any cabinet so I put those in on here um, and I also installed them in the um, bedroom overhead uh, cabinets here is your uh, fridge. It runs off of propane and also electricity if you're on shore power. Um, works really well. There's a pretty good amount of size. Um, I, for me and my wife, we wouldn't need anything bigger. Freezer, separate freezer compartment. And it's also got these little sensors that feed to this display right here that will show you. Uh, the top one's your freezer, bottom one's your refrigerator show you the temperature inside the fridge and freezer all right um coming into the bedroom section um here is your two wardrobes uh they both have a mirror on the main uh, wardrobe door this one does have a little bit of a crack in it um i don't know if you can see that or not but uh there's a little crack once again cosmetic so you open this um you got hanging storage in here two drawers right there and then under there is actually where your water heater is so when you're going to winterize if you're going to do your own you take this drawer out and you can get to the valves here like i said just like the other side um, you can take these drawers out and have another hanging closet or use it for drawer or um, not drawer um, shelf storage two drawers and then your 115 volt and 12 volt uh, circuit breaker panel. And then above that is a lot of the guts for the um, solar uh, and lithium setup. So you have your inverter back there. You have your solar charge um, controller back there. And um, some of the other components um, back there. So it's easily accessible and it's inside and you know that it is... Uh, out of the elements and then your other main component of that system is the batteries right here I made this little panel um, so that uh, you can easily access them although you never really need to but there's a little angle iron in there to secure them and those are the dual uh, 206 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion uh, batteries um, fit really perfect in there I was really happy with that and then I actually made a access panel below the fridge too. Um, your low point drains, you're not gonna be able to see it probably, but they're back there. So once again, when you're winterizing, it's good to know where those are. And then those are just on magnets, so you don't have to worry about stripping out screws, get into them frequently. Here, is it's an rv queen bed however we have a regular size queen mattress on there uh, 
you lose a little bit of the space to walk through there but um, we liked that extra length so it was worth it to us uh, overhead storage like I said we'll have that light in there you have two windows right here that are open um, you can open for cross ventilation um, you have little cubbies right in here uh, that's the Amazon or the Alexa uh, thing <laughs> it's gonna listen again and here is your radio controls there's speakers in the bedroom and then there's also those two speakers outside this has a very annoying blue light that is hard to sleep with so I wired that to a switch um, in this little cubby that you can turn on and off and not have that light shining in your eyes all the time um, there are outlets in the back of these cubbies too under the bed oh well this is one thing i'd like to show you is um this isn't the factory mattress we threw that out the slide part of the bed is about two inches higher than this base because it slides onto it so the factory mattress had one side of the mattress that it was like eight inches uh, deep and then the other side of the mattress that was six inches deep to accommodate for those depth differences We didn't like that. We didn't like that mattress. We didn't want to have to order a custom mattress So what I did was built this little platform. It's it matches um, the difference and It's made of quarter inch plywood sandwiching um, Like rigid foam, so it's not too light or sorry it's not too heavy it's pretty light and um i wrapped it or postered it to make it look a little bit nicer so when you take that side in and out you're gonna have to move that to the side um like that and then this was screwed down you had no access to it whatsoever um i had well how did that work it was screwed down, but it was still in two pieces. I unscrewed it and realized, like, this doesn't make sense. You're losing some storage. Why not have access to it? So I put this piano hinge on here that comes up like that. And this is where I store all my tools, a lot of them, at least my hand tools. And then under the tools is the fresh water tank. And you can get access actually to the water pump, too, for winterizing. So otherwise you would have to access it from the outside, that little storage. It's way easier accessing it in here. And um, I thought it just made sense. So I'll put this back down and move this. So that's the bedroom. Um, as you can see, TV right there. Bathroom real quick. Pretty basic, uh, decent size um, shower. It's not too small, it's got a nice skylight in there. It's got a curved shower rod. Gives you as much room as you would need in the shower. Toilet's pretty cool because it's porcelain, nice toilet. And then we have a bidet installed on it that helps you not put too much uh, toilet paper into your black tank, which keeps it from clogging up. So uh, the bidet is plumbed into the regular water system and works out pretty good uh, vanity it's got that same countertop material um, stainless steel sink in here which is nice because I didn't put that cheap plastic uh, so I didn't need to change anything out in here you do have a medicine cabinet right there and then some overhead storage right here do you have a fan in here as well as fan, oh, sorry, that's really dirty. Fan right there. This is a Max Air fan. Fan, um, and, and it also has a hood um, on the roof, so you don't have to worry about rain coming in. And then there's the last one, second one, and then your air conditioning. Um, one last thing that I'll talk about in here is the internet setup. There is a pointing, I don't know exactly how to say that, but there's a 
MIMO multiple in, multiple out antenna on the roof. That goes into this Insego um, modem, which you can put, um, it's got dual SIM card spots. We have a, we had a Verizon and an AT&T one that went into there. Um, those are the two uh, cords coming in from the antenna on the roof. And then I have that feeding into a little bit better um, Wi-Fi router that has a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz um, network. Um, so all, all this would come with it if you wish or need it. Um, but you would be good to go. You just need to get a, I can help you out with it, but you need to get a SIM card um, that will go into the back of that modem. And um, you have mobile internet on the road. Uh, works when you're driving, works when you're parked. Um, there's multiple apps that you can go to and get your expected coverage. So, uh, that is just about everything on the inside. Um, I'm going to come go outside and see if it's not too icy to try to get a view at the solar panels for you. Sorry, it's a little bit windy now, but um, it's my, I'm by myself, so we'll see if we can do this. All right. So I'm not going to go up on the roof all the way, it's a little bit icy, but uh, those are those Mac, Max Air vent fans. Um, the white thing right up there is your antenna, and then you have the three solar panels, 100 watt solar panels, and then the fourth one to the right of the air conditioning. Uh, I was up on this roof and uh, resealed a lot of the um, fittings and uh, it's always good to go up there um, and take a look at that and make sure that you reseal everything that's cracking. You do have a slider topper um, right here and I'm gonna come back down. I'll give you a, a quick peek inside of the tracker. So uh, pretty clean. Um, Really nice car, practical, toes nice. Uh, this is under the weight limit that you need supplemental braking, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can have this thing hooked up and unhooked in a matter of uh, probably two minutes when you're good at it. Those are the um, easy tire pressure monitoring um, sensors that hook up to the monitor in there so you can tell. Um, your six tires on your RV and your four in your tow vehicle. You can tell the tire pressure on them and also the temperature. It's a four door, a uh, decent amount of space in the back seat as well. It's a manual everything, uh, manual locks, manual windows. You don't have to worry about any of that braking, manual transmission. It's uh, about as basic uh, of a car as it gets, which is great when it's coming on 20 years old and you're worrying about things breaking. Uh, Full-size spares on the back. Uh, the tires have tons of tread left on them. Um, this opens like that, and you still have uh, quite a bit of storage in the back. It's the bikes. I think that's just about everything. I know this video has been really long and a lot longer than what I uh, originally wanted, but there's just so much to show, and I hope that you can get a pretty good idea of the RV and some of the things that are you know the flaws of the RV but also some of the really good stuff too um, this is completely turnkey and you could be down in Arizona next week and um, Arizona or Utah on BOM land and living off the grid for a week to two weeks at a time um, it's just a really unique setup that has been um, Anything that can go wrong probably has already been wrong. It's been fixed. It's been improved. You know what you're getting with some of these new RVs. Um, there's just problem after problem after problem, especially you hear the horror stories of the post-COVID uh, RVs and uh, the workmanship on them. So this has a lot of the kinks already worked out. It's a great unit. I was honest with uh, some of the imperfections on it. Um, if I th can think of anything else or if you have any other questions, um, I, you can reach me um, either by email or cell phone. 
Um, my email is Kruggy88, K-R-U-G-G-Y-88 at gmail.com. And my cell phone is area code 920-539-8072. Once again, my name is Tyson, and feel free to reach out. Um, I'd love to show it to you in person, and I'm just looking forward to having the RV go to a good home. All right, have a great day. Bye.